What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Raiders Theme Team. Episode number two. Uh, Team Diamonds just came out, so you know I have mad pickups and cops on the way. That's basically what we're going to do. We're going to show off all the new acquisitions that we got, and then we're just going to uh, do a post comp on a game, my first game with those new cards. And that game was uh, first round Mutthead Friday Night Football versus Saint, who was also a Raiders club representative back in Madden 18. I actually beat him for the club live event so you know we're gonna be showing our new cards uh you know their stats and all that showing this raiders 50 50 and um after that i'll be breaking down a pretty good gameplay in which my opponent actually had bucks theme team which is very good as well but it is somewhat outdated so right off the bat man uh phil sims he's not gonna be there for long man i know you guys were a lot of people in my twitch chat why do you have sims why do you have sims well the main reason is because he gets conductor and if you've been watching me play for a while, you know I love me some Conductor. 1 AP on a Field General, Pass Lead Elite. No Gunslinger, unfortunately. I do miss having Gunslinger, but you know, with Dan Marino having A-Rod's release, yeah, you heard that right. He has Slinger 1. I don't think it's going to be too much of an issue once I get him. Even I'll even settle for the power-up. So, you know, obviously we have 135K, probably like 5, if we have like 500K more, you know, 600K more, we'll be able to afford Dan Marino's power-up, which... You know, it was better than Phil Sim to say the least. And then after that, we just picked up this TJ Husmanzada. Um, just wait until you see his gameplay in the, you know, in the uh, actual gameplay. He's like he his player build looks exactly like Troy Polamalu. This guy's a dog, six foot two, slot archetype. Um, I use short and elite and slot apprentice on him. Two AP for both of those, and just can't be much better than that. After that, we have Andre Ryzen. Um, and this guy is a dog as well. Never really even heard of him. Uh, Husband Zada, I definitely heard of, but he's 95 speed. And by the way, I'll show you all the themes that he has. If in case you want to, you know, switch them up, uh, or if you know you rock any of these theme teams, that's what all he gets. Um, Raiders 50/50. I'm using double books because I don't have Marino with that uh, hot round master yet. Slot apprentice, outside apprentice. I match him up on the outside. He is a dog, man. And then obviously we have Jerry Rice still. He, Andre Rice and Jerry Rice are both number 80. So, you know, that definitely, and they rice and rise in, you know, it's, it could be kind of confusing for the defenders out there. Um, no, we did not pick up any of the old linemen yet and or do Staley. Uh, eventually, we'll pick him up. You know, I'm not a runner, so I don't need that guy right away. Someone new we got is Junior Seau. Um, I just did this because I didn't really need Hester anymore, and it saves me some coins. I am going to get Derek Johnson eventually, um, uh, the Chiefs team diamond he's he played for the raiders he has 90 speed on our max raiders 50 50 theme team but for now junior say i was a free card when i do run 35 wide he is out there um besides that we got jack tatum who is an absolute monster um only knock on him is he's 510 but you know 94 speed 84 strength uh 94 zone coverage 83 man i play him in the slot which is you know basically he's blitzing a lot of the time and or you know just in the three wreck or something like that i occasionally will man him up um with that 83 zone it is you know doable you can man him up but but besides that man he's just a dog um people say he's very good at the user as well i wouldn't use him because he's 510 but you know 92 hit power he is insane obviously he has big hitter um i really do wish he was like 95 speed maybe honestly i do like i really enjoy seeing him on the field and that's pretty much it i want to say um you know cam chancellor here we had to get rid of ed reed because there's just no spots left for him. We play Reggie Nelson at linebacker. Um, I can't wait to get my max cam. That's someone I need ASAP. Because right now my cam chancellor has 93 speed. Uh, when I do get max cam, which should be like within a week, I plan on playing him outside. Right now I'm playing Diablo outside, which is, you know, it's cool, but you can't really man him up. Only thing Diablo really does is play like a soft squat, cloud flat, or like a deep blue. Um, at least the defense I run. He's 6'3", obviously he's a dog. But, um, you know, I feel a little, you know, my personal defense could be better. So with all that being taken care of, I forgot to mention we did get this new Harold Landry. Um, I don't know how I didn't go over him. You know, he was not a team diamond. He's not a Raider, but 89 speed. I mean, what else do you need to see? 94 finesse move. This dude is uh, cracked out. So with all that taken care of, let's get in the gameplay where, you know, we witness, uh, we showcase these goons. First Friday night football in a minute that we've been, you know, in, and it was actually a really good game versus Saint. I'm gonna post comment right now. And honestly, this is what I prefer to do for, you know, gameplays with theme teams. It's like some comp, you know, it's always cool to just get into head-to-head -head live comp and, you know, break down some stuff, but I feel like this is really where it's gonna be at. 
as right here we're gonna hit jerry rice first play we don't have route tech on him but you know he's still able to cook bucks theme team revis and that's another reason you know he's rocking a bucks theme team obviously uh by far the best theme team so far obviously is the raiders 50 50 and it just keeps getting better as right here we're gonna try to go up top nothing open besides hushman zada and like i said man i told you he looks like troy palomalu just a tall version of him He's right here free play alert um we really don't see anything we're gonna take off with phil sims and he has 74 speed man um you know like i said it's gonna be marino soon eventually he will have 80 speed can you imagine a game where Dan Marino not only has gunsling, uh, excuse me, pass lead elite. He doesn't, he not only has conductor, he not only has hot round master, but guess what? He has 80 speed as well. That That's just insane. You know, this kind of like a golden ticket at this point. Obviously, you know, golden tickets will be like 90, 99 speed, but uh, 80 speed on Dan Marino is way more than we need, especially in this year's Madden. So right here, we're going to hit a little bit of mesh post to Reggie Bush and we get this weird animation, but you know, we'll take it. So, so far, you know, I've only thrown it really to Hush Manzada. And forgive me if I'm but butchering his name. Uh, it's pretty tough to pronounce. You try doing it. It's right here. We're going to go back to him once more. Wide open. Short and elite. Really didn't activate right there. But, you know, he gets a job done. And like I said, that's literally Troy Palomalu in a, you know, six foot two frame. It's right here. Goal line. Um, we put Derrick Henry back on the squad for goal to goal situations. Definitely was a necessity, especially in Colts bunch. Uh, something I've been having trouble running in the red zone. Excuse me, Colts playbook. Uh, I, I got to definitely tune in and tap in with some of the red zone dots slash runs. It's right here. We're going to go no huddle. Not really no huddle, but, you know, we're going to flip, try to catch him off guard. And this guy has some great fullback dive D. And guys, stay tuned for some new gameplays. We played so many new players. Uh, we played Vos, We played Nini. Some hell games all around. Definitely stay tuned for that. Those will just be normal gameplays, probably post comms, or maybe just, you know, highlight videos. But um, here we go, man. Fourth and goal early. Like I said, this is my number one issue right now in offense. Um, I feel like it is almost everyone's number one issue with the red zone. It's right here. We're going to go sneak a very risky call. But we end up getting it. Let's go. We end up going 7-0. Raiders 50-50 on top. Guys, man, um, I know we play the Dolphins without Tua tomorrow, but uh, Jacoby Brissett is a dog. I'm a little scared. I made a tweet earlier saying, you know, it could be a trap game. As the pressure right there to Reggie Nelson, our user gets stuck. And there's Saquon out there, you know, someone you really don't see too much nowadays. But this defense is really where it's going to witness, you know, showcase the Raiders 50-50. I do have Mike Edwards playing uh, safety on the left. And, you know, he's a dog, 94 speed um, zone archetype. So you can slap on mid zone, slap on ac acrobat. Honestly, the mid zone up top hasn't really shown me too much. They do activate and light up, but like, it's just even when they do, it's like they're in situations where, you know, they can't really get to the ball or make a play. It's right here. Saint is in the gun bunch offset, as you guys told by the previous two plays. Um, for my, you know, depth chart, I'm using Morig and I have Cam on the other side too. Both are 93 and 94 speed. We got Montez Sweat, DT, Harold on the outside, and Demarcus Ware on the outside as well. And like I said earlier, Diablo's playing the left corner. Mike Haynes on the right corner. Uh, slot cornerback is Jack Tatum. I don't really like to play, you know, shorter type of guys. I am playing Mike Edwards, ironically. But, you know, the thing with Mike Edwards is, like he said, like I said, is he is a zone archetype. So, you know, I could really do that. It's right here. Jack Tatum, try to line up a big hit stick. You know, it's just you don't see fumbles this year, man. Um, I was definitely like, oh, yeah, this is a free hit stick right here. We can maybe see a fumble or at least a big hit animation. And, you know, I didn't get either, honestly. I was definitely surprising. But, I mean, that goes to show that Saquon is a bigger body. It's right there. We play great defense. Jack Tatum manned him up on that post route. He played it for just enough time for that pressure to come in. Reggie Nelson. And, you know, he's 93 speed coming off that edge. I'll make a, you know, video or something like that on how to do that. Um, out of odd it's really glitchy so you can have you know three safeties in odd it's right here big fourth down and three and saying is someone i played so many times it's right here he's gonna hit an easy die i mean that's as easy as it comes i thought he was gonna run a flat play you know that's all i play really and that's all i do honestly run flats um so you know i always like to adjust for the flats man whether i just keep my soft squats out there whether i right there had a zero curl flat um just you know Try to think of a, try to predict his play. And, you know, he just end up dotting us. It's right here. He's going back to the run. Something he actually, you know, he runs the ball quite a bit. Um, I understand why, because this 2-4-5 odd defense is a little intimidating. 
I'll show you right here once more back on Trevin Morgan. And there goes the flip. Something we had to deal with at a 245 odd. If you run it, you know the bunch flip is nasty. It's right here. Great user. And then I get bumped. I mean, uh, honestly, probably was not a great user, I meant to say. But, um, you know, great blitz, you know, great coverage. And then we just got bumped on George Kittle. But this Bucks theme team is pretty nice, man. You get Shipley, who I believe gets up to 92 speed, slot archetype, a route runner archetype. So you know he's gonna have like that route apprentice, slot apprentice, and route tech. You got Galloway, who I believe could get up to 95, 96 speed. And then on the outside, he has Devin Hester, who obviously gets every team cam. And let's pour one out to Devin Hester, you know, unless he's still using him, um, then you know, it is what it is. But for me, man, he was a baller. There's certain instances I just, oh, I couldn't bear him. And then there's certain instances where like he's a baller. But right here, he's gonna go for the corner route. And speaking of Shipley, he gets cheated. That's some someone said with those shorter receivers, you get bad animations on the sideline. And that definitely happened to him right there. It's right here, man. He's gonna flip, go no huddle, not no huddle, quick hike. And we played great defense right there. We manned up Shipley. He was somewhat open still, but we had a vert hook behind it. And we're gonna force him to kick three. It's right here, man. 91 speed Waller on the flats is too OP. Um, that's something I really do hope they fix. And, you know, when they do fix it, I definitely know it's going to mess me up a little bit because I love throwing the flats. It's the easiest read ever. Um, you get so many yards, especially with 91 speed out there. But I'm definitely waiting for when, you know, they fix those flat coverage assignments. It's right here. We make a little risky read. But short and elite on Darren Waller bails us out. That zone kind of baited me. I really did think it was a purple. Um, maybe I should start motioning over that flat route. It's right here. Once more running speed dig in a play that, uh, you know, I'm pretty decent at. And there goes TJ Huss. Uh, just a nice low ball. Man, oh man, he's a dog, especially in the slot. Especially if you run bunch, you know, he's going to be able to get those short intermediate routes and go out there, get your crossers, your corner routes. He doesn't drop a pass. He has all the traits. It's right here. Once more, we are going to run a little bit of double post. And I'm, I have him where I want him right now, man. Uh, I, he gets ball at half, obviously. But, you know, if we go up 11 points right here, I'm feeling groovy. Especially if we don't allow him to get any points before half. And, you know, we have the no huddle glitch on our side. It's right here once more. I'm going to go back to Ryzen. I think that's his first catch on the day. And that route runner archetype, that inverted zig, um, that zig route right there out of dig return is such a glitchy play. It's so many, it's so easy yards. Uh, if you run bunch and have that play in your playbook, try cooking up a route combo, man. You would believe uh, you'll see some nice results out of that play. It's right here. We're going to run the ball. Subbed in Derrick Henry. Kind of made it obvious, but um, right here, I could care less. I want to take his timeouts and take the time. Right here, we see Reggie Bush. He runs a nice Mabel defense. I kind of had the fly on the left wide open, but Reggie Bush gets us those yards. Like I said, Deuce Staley might be on the way soon, but um, I've heard mixed reviews about Deuce. Some people say he's good. Some people say, you know, it's not really worth it. Uh, Reggie Bush always got really nice animations for me in the past game. So, I mean, might be hard to go, you know, away from him. So after converting the third and one with Derrick Henry, we go no huddle. And why can't it always be that easy, man? Why can't it always be that easy with the fullback dives? I feel like, you know, they're decent this year, but they're definitely not as good as they once were. 41 seconds, no timeouts. I mean, even if I hold on the three, I'll feel good because we essentially would get ball last. Um, just no seven, man, please. Right here, guys, running a little bit of coverage, trying to hold them in that pocket. We have double contains, right and left side, and boom. That's exactly what I wanted. We, you know, cross man Reggie Nelson. He obviously gets fried, but, you know, it's only for a gain of, you know, what, 10, 12 yards. And not to mention, we hold them in bounds. Boom, the time is ticking. We're going to just try to send the heat once and, you know, eventually get a sack. But look at this dot. He throws it. And the way, at the time he threw it, man, it was great timing. And that's just 95, 96 feet. Galloway Bucks theme team. I'm going to rewind that real quick. I'm telling you guys, this was a 30 cloud fly on the left. Diablo keeps running. Look when he threw it, man. He just threw it at the best time ever. I wouldn't call it like a guess, but it probably... I don't know, man. He definitely knew it was cover two. Um, he got the no huddle glitch. That's a, uh, that's a rookie mistake by me. Got to call a timeout uh, when he's about to hike and just, you know, I'd probably run the same coverage again, except, you know, hopefully this time I would, you know, get the pressure in. Nonetheless, that's a heartbreaker. Uh, he ends up getting seven before half and gets the ball a half. And, you know, Saint is someone who holds the ball and, you know, like he has long, you know, he turns out long drives. And when you're on defense, that could kind of make you, you know, 
go a little crazy especially like you know when you're scoring so efficiently you want to get the ball bro you want to have the ball um and then you know the time of possession always comes into factor at the end of the game it always does first play at a half he's gonna hit us with a barkley inside zone and these inside zones kind of gash two four five odd man i won't lie to you so you know I, I have no reason to get mad like oh he's toting oh he's doing this there's no reason for that because you know i know what it comes with running this defense when you sign up for it is it you know it comes down to the fact is am i, am I gonna get a shed am i gonna go shoot the gap am i gonna run commit and right now you know i'm expecting him to pass but you know i soon you know like i'm, I'm gonna catch on to him running um uh, i believe either this play or the next play i think he runs once more and he does and after this play i'm like yeah i gotta make adjustment he just ran the ball three straight times and he's passed midfield into my territory without really having to do anything so what we do is end up getting a 146 which you know believe it or not this is pretty funny it's actually in my opinion better run d than uh 245 odd and i don't know why that is but you'll see right here on this play he he's gonna run the ball and you know he's gonna expect to get some yards we are on the safety and look we get a shed on the left and demarcus Ware absolutely beat whoever was blocking him on the left as well so you know we got montez sweat shed in the dt and then obviously Ware came in free and you know i saw that i'm like yeah let me run this for a little bit you know slow down the run a little bit uh we end up actually getting back in odd i believe and you know we actually get another shed so you know it's pretty random montez sweat does what he wants at times that he wants you know he got two back-to-back -back sheds um, when not getting a shed three straight times in a row and right here we're just trying to play a little bit of good defense and you know boom he hits us with a nice read across the middle um, i definitely got quick hiked right there he saint loves to go no huddle it will make you go mad if you play him um, the no huddle is insane especially with how easy and how fast you are able to call hike in this year's game not to mention the defense being very very tough in this year's game it's right here he's gonna audible over to another run out of inside zone i think he runs right here uh, excuse me he's gonna pass he ends up passing and can't do that versus one four six we get like three people coming in free he did have quite a bit of time but you know harold landry and then whoever else was there decided to, you know fight for me and that's what I like about this, you know, Bears playbook on defense. You know, if I'm struggling on, I could always hop in 1-4. They're very similar. Um, both have very nice coverage. I would say odds coverage is, you know, very, not bad, but it's just not as good as wide. And the whole reason, uh, not wide, 1-4. And the whole reason we want run 1-4 is, you know, we could still screen. Plus, we have crazy sheds and disengages. Plus, we have crazy coverage as right there, Harold uh, Landry that's why you go cop him 89 speed just absolutely b gapping my opponent and right here man you know we're we're playing for you know him getting three if he gets you know a nice dot right here it's cool if he gets a first down I'd definitely be mad so we're you know in the in the spot to shoot the gap he just runs a drag to George Kittle and he actually ends up getting almost enough yards for that which is crazy um basically allowing him to go for it right here so that was bad coverage on my part right there right here we get pressure and the guess read of hell man that play uh is a great play but you know if you get the hound sent at you if you get block shedded if you get any type of heat coming your way it's tough to make a read because you know that zig route does take its time it takes its sweet time to get open and right there just a guess read of hell no doubt about it because i was literally on that route the whole way until the last second I cleared out and that's just Reggie Nelson for you man you know he's not bad but it is definitely tough to use her is right here he's gonna audible the deuce we run commit out of 146 and we actually stop the run so you know he has OJ Howard in the slot which you know I'm completely fine with the only thing I'm not fine with at this point is that I'm in 146 versus the run definitely should call a timeout but those timeouts in the second half in this year's game are so valuable so he's gonna end up running again I believe right here and we're there man so you know 146 is showing his promise against the run um he's not gonna go no huddle there he's gonna try to settle up and dot right here we're gonna switch up the defense we audible from two four five odd to three three five wide run a little bit of man coverage and great defense man just great fence all over across the board he's gonna have to scramble but that's why we have trevin morig out there and basically spy coverage and fourth and seven you know he's gonna have to you know this is a tough call man it is a really tough call. Um, you win, you kick threes, it could lose you games. You go for stuff like this, it could lose you games. 
It's just such a tough call. He's going to end up going for it, man. And we're going to set up the man coverage again for this first play out of the fourth quarter. The biggest play of the game thus far. Right here, we run man coverage. He's going to try to go to the left side. And that's why you go cop yourself a Mike Edwards with mid zone KO. Uh, we put him in a cloud flat and he did exactly what I wanted him to do. Not play towards the sideline. Don't let anything beat you. And, you know, don't let anything get over the top of you. He is 5'10", so, you know, it got a little scary right there, but he did what he needed to do. Great interception. Go cop yourself a Mike Edwards now. Um, like I said, he's 5'10", but, you know, I've seen a lot of plays from him um, out there in the safety position. I run a lot of cover, too, and, you know, I feel I feel like he's all, all over the place. It's right here. We're going to run the ball. We got a post-up who kind of lights up. That is something I've noticed over the years. Post-ups do light up on the run. Um, you know, do what you want with that info. And right here, I feel like I went to this play way too many times. Um, I don't know why. Uh, he's going to end up getting crazy pressure. And, you know, it was also bad pocket. That was both bad pocket plus crazy pressure with Ed Reed. And that's like one one of the rare times you'll see 3-3-5 wide getting some instant pressure like that. It's just not what it was, man. The loop is pretty good, but it is what it is. It's right here. We're going to spin and get to what is this? A th fourth and three, man. Very manageable. He's going to call a timeout and regroup. I love the timeout call, but you know, we're still going to go for this. All right, guys, I'm going to be a little blind right here. Watch Reggie Bush. He's going to be completely wide open. And, you know, we end up going to Huss and he gets it for us. But man, oh man, it was such a tough read. Uh, Darrell Rivas bit back down. His user was kind of in the area. And, you know, it was so, so much easier of a read if I went to Reggie Bush. And I may have had the angle route on the other side. Excuse me, not angle route, the zig route. But I definitely was looking left the whole time. It's right here. We're going to try to put it away with a couple stretches to Reggie Bush. Boom, first stretch. And we are almost there. We're down to the two-yard line. This is looking good for us. Right here, man, Derrick Henry, new added, newly added. Can you get it done? No, you can't on here on this play. So, you know, I feel like I'm going to go for it no matter what to ice the game. MCS game, I don't know if I'm going for this. Uh, money tournament, you know, good reps. Yeah, I definitely will. To see, you know, should I start going for it or not? And right here, Derrick Henry falls down to the one. That's why I want him. You know, obviously we didn't score, but you know, that had no chance of getting any yards. And Henry said, I got you, Pop. I'm a fight and fall forward for two extra yards. But big play right here, man. I'm still thinking if I should go for it or not. We end up going for it. Just giving you a heads up. We are end up we are gonna end up passing to Waller right here. This is one of my favorite plays of all time, but we somehow get bagged. By I don't even want to know who that dude was and that's our only incompletion to this point Somehow we're in a position to lose a game. It's so tough man Like you'll feel like a beast on offense and do the you know the clock management um, Not being able to get a couple stops Getting stopped in the red zone getting held to three you'll find yourself in a predicament like this Which is insane. We end up getting a shed, but no safety We're the Seattle refs I feel like I have them right there. That could have been a safety. But like I said, man, who, I don't know how a D-end bagged short and elite corner route to Darren Waller for our only incompletion, by the way. But it is what it is. We're going to end up calling timeout. He's in goal line versus 146. That's a no bueno in my opinion. And see right here, he's just trying to get a couple yards of breathing room. And this is fine for me, man. I'm going to even run commit because I know he's not going to pass to George Kittle. And if he does, we're going to be able to hawk him down. He ends up actually getting like five, six yards, which is pretty crazy uh, considering the fact we ran commit, we crashed down. We did everything in our power to actually, you know, hold him to, you know, maybe negative yards and get a safety end of game. But here we go with the no huddle quick hike. Look at this two minute warning glitch. Oh my God. And right there, easy reads to Saquon Barkley. They got to fix this so badly, especially now that conductor is out. This is going to be very tough for the boy to get a couple stops in these scenarios. I mean, this might honestly be virtually impossible. Cons uh, the only thing that I have going for me is the time. And there another thing I got going for me is Harold Landry. Go cop him ASAP. This man is a walking glitch, disengage, speed, anything, you name it. He's right here. He may have had a couple things open, but ends up not getting anything. And guess what? Guess what? We get roughing the passer. A big noob mistake by your boy. Uh, I clicked on and dove at his feet, just very, you know, just feeling very, what's it called, um, like anxious, uh, just trying to get the sack, trying to end the game he, then and there. He ends up getting 15 free yards. I mean, honestly, we're still in a very favorable spot, but anything could happen. I've seen some crazy bombs this year 
beating deep halves, quarters, you name it, man. And I'm in a blitz heavy defense still. Uh, but you see me, I run back and then I have a bad user. He may have had that post, but I trust I trust my canes uh, with a lot of responsibility right there. Thankfully, he ended up not throwing it. Maybe, you know, it would have got picked. But at the end of the day, I'd rather give up a 15-yard play than a questionable 50-yard play. So right here, we're gonna you're going to see me run coverage. You know, I don't like the way the defense looked last play. We're going to run a deep blue middle linebacker to, you know, prevent any type of bunch trail dots. It's right here. He's going to run verticals. He's going to hit this in route, which I'm completely fine with, man. You know, it gets a little scary, but now he's down to his last timeout. We hold him in bounds a couple more times, and the game's over. Even a sack. Um, it's just very tough in these scenarios. You want to blitz them and get the sack, but they could always run Max Protect verticals, uh, Max Protect bunch trail. They could always run those type of like you know long developing plays. What I don't like is him going to this. I feel like this is a complete and utter freestyle, especially with how much time is left. We're gonna man up a couple guys. We have that purple on the left side, who's actually Sean Taylor, and you know he actually plays out of his mind right here. See right here, he's gonna play this purple. He's gonna bait it, but I don't get an acro man. I don't know what that hand in the air animation was it's just a, ugh. it's just like that's all i could describe it as is ugh. not really a good animation maybe try to get like an acro right there but we're down to the nitty gritty man trust me i have my curl uh my soft squats my cloud flats on like 25 30 depth it's right here he's gonna go in the offset again man and that's um carolina for you for uh you know it doesn't have that bunch tight end it doesn't have that trips tight end uh like seattle and you know other bunch playbooks do but it does have tight which I feel like you can't really run tight versus 146. There's such a crazy blitz threat. And there goes Harold Landry again. He's an absolute unit. Once more, same type of coverage. 25, 30 clouds. Um, you know, soft squad, same thing. Right here, we try to get some more pressure. And he's going to go up top. And Mike Edwards makes a good play again. That kind of got scary, man. And after seeing that, I'm like, yeah, no more, man. There's just, you can't scream. You really, the main issue is I couldn't get no pressure. He was max protecting, which is, you know, it's justifiable. You're going to max protect, you'll pick up the heat any day of the week. Um, you know, so I'm like, you know what? Let's just run man coverage, have a deep blue here. It's pretty much prevent defense for the game. Let's get off the field and get into the next round of FNF. And the, the hard flat right there is a 30. So, you know, if my man somehow does get beat, we have a 30 right there. And... The play call was kind of questionable. Um, you know, we have contains. We're sitting back. We're praying a broken play doesn't happen. Left side is kind of open. But Montez says, I got you, Pop. GG's in the chat to Saint. Round two. We end up playing Reek. We beat him. The next FNF gameplay you'll see is me versus Nini. Crazy game. Um, a lot of points. A lot of streaks. A lot of no defense. Um, that's all I got to say. Appreciate y'all rocking with me with this Raiders theme team episode number two. Till next time, catch you guys in the next video, whatever it may be. Go Raiders, big game versus the Dolphins. Let's get the dub.